Even before the epidemic, new and transformational technologies were fast entering the workplace, allowing businesses to innovate and prosper in a more digital environment. But then came 2020, and what was meant to take years had to happen in a matter of months. The disruption of work and business ecosystems necessitated the use of digital transformation, and most organizations stepped up their efforts to address this abrupt shift. Caesar was ahead of the curve on this one. He saw that in order for Companions Forever to expand and be ready to sell, he needed to digitally change the company because like others, the home care business had been lagging behind other industries. So once you define the areas within your company that could benefit from a more digital approach, how did you go about turning this idea into a fully functional CRM? Um, I think most companies uh, get to a point, you know, whether they have 100, 150 clients that they've kind of plateaued. And one of the main reasons for this is uh, data management. I mean, your coordinators are so focused on, on paperwork that they can't really focus on, on, on the client. So I, I wasn't no different than any of the other agencies, and that's where we were. So I knew that we had to create our own um, software. And that's only because I went looking out for other platforms that would help our company and nothing was really f focused on, um, on the home care uh, industry. So I finally found somebody and we started developing it. Uh, but quickly uh, I saw that the cultural differences and the language barrier kind of hindered me from getting to where I wanted to be. So I kind of abandoned that, uh, you know, that, that first uh, uh, stage or first you know, development uh, of software. And I had to try to find the right person uh, who really had the same vision as I did. And I, and I finally did. That's when we started developing um, uh, Gus. Okay, so how did you decide then what modules to develop and implement first? Uh, again, that's tough because, uh, you know, once you get, you know, a developer and you get a team, which is really, really important, um, that sees your vision. Uh, and based on your blueprint that I created, uh, they can create those logics. Um, but there's so many areas there. Uh, I mean, uh, the home care industry is, uh, uh, is, is, is big and, and there's so many moving parts. Um, so where do you start? You start with the CRM, you have payroll, billing, um, you have UC2 control, you have a QC section. Uh, there's just so much. Um, but all what I, I knew we needed is to get everything done so we can be more efficient and really focus on our client because that's the most important thing. If you're a coordinator and you're really supposed to be supporting that client and looking out best for that client, but you know, 75% of the time you're, you know, you're doing paperwork, uh, you know, your, your quality of service suffers. So you said Gus helped streamline the process of Companions Forever. Could you give me some examples of how this was done in practice? It's, uh, you know, Gus does a lot, and once we got in all our logics needed to make um, Companions Forever more efficient, uh, you know, it was now an alpha stage with Companions Forever, and we're kind of, you know, um, fine-tuning, uh, you know, Gus. And I can give you probably an example of, let's say, the total process that most agencies go through, and understand that everything here is all digital and streamlined. Okay, and, and efficient. So if you get a client, you do client intake, um, and you get the information that you need from a referral source or from the actual client's family. That goes into open cases. That automatically goes to Rosa Jobs. You know, Rosa Jobs is marketing those cases. Okay, somebody chooses that case. You, you, you view the, the simple application. You decide she's a good candidate. They fill out the full application. Uh, you do an interview there with your iPad. You, you decide you're going to employ them, you send them over the training docs, they fill out the training docs on their phone, okay? Once they finish that, you convert to, to caregiver, okay? Once you convert to caregiver, they have a profile. Within that profile, you know, you have all the docs needed. Um, and you also close out the case. Now, if that caregiver doesn't work out, uh, when it goes back into open cases and gets marketed again, it rolls the jobs. The whole process starts over again. There's also the billing. There's also the payroll, uh, UC2, QC control. Um, there's just so many areas um, in GUS, and they all work together. You mentioned one of the biggest areas that can be improved on by using GUS is the unemployment process in company audits. 
Can you expound on that a little bit for me? Yeah, I think that's every agency's fears, you know, uh, and a lot of agencies kind of don't sleep at night. And it's because many agencies maybe don't use uh, 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 certain platforms or use multiple platforms or, you know, they're concerned about audits. Um, also, they're concerned about the rate, UC2 rate, you know, when it comes to unemployment. Um, you know, you get audited and now you need to get all this paperwork. And you can find some, you can't find others. It's just a big hassle and it interrupts your day-to-day -day work when it comes to your agency. Uh, and the best thing about Gus is that those, the, the, those compliant docs uh, are already in Gus, and the caregivers are already signing those digitally. And so when they create their profile, everything is in there digitally that you can print out or you can show that the person coming through the, doing the audit. When it comes to the UC2, um, that's a difficult area most agencies have um, because <laughs> for every disciplinary action, you have to have it in writing, right? And you have to produce that. So uh, most companies it's, don't have that or can't produce that. So their rates are just incredibly high, especially if they have a big turnaround on their, their caregivers. Well, the best thing about Gus is that you know, with disciplinary actions, it's all digital and it's, it's sent to the telephone, um, you know, to the employee, and they rather have to sign it or come see the HR. And, uh, you know, it's one or the other. So we have that, that there digitally. So if they go to unemployment and they, you know, uh, they are saying uh, their version uh, of the story, but we have, uh, you know, the paperwork showing that um, this is how things were, this helps us out on unemployment. And it keeps our UC2 rate uh, very low. It's clear that Gus can streamline home care agency processes, and it ultimately aided in the sale of your company. So what is the future for Gus? I'm really excited for Gus. Uh, I mean, it's out of alpha stage now and into beta, and we're implementing a lot of logic from Gus into Rosa. We got a lot of feedback from agencies and what their needs were. And one of them was uh, they're using way too many uh, platforms, and it, was, it just wasn't efficient. Uh, Gus uh, and Rosa really, you know, that's all you really need is one platform that does everything from your CRM to UC2 control, from you know, uh, payroll to billing to now marketing. Oh, so I forgot to ask you, Caesar. How did you come up with the name Gus? Uh, that's a good, uh, good question. Um, Gus is my dad, and I've been taking care of him for about 15, almost 18 years now. He's a great person, and and that's how I came up with the name. And Rosa was my grandmother. You know, uh, that I I I kind of uh, got into the industry of home care because of her.